All right, everyone, today we are going to talk about the hard and fast rules that you have to follow when you are panning your tracks. Actually, we're not gonna talk about that. We are gonna talk about panning, but this is music and you get to do whatever you want. It's a beautiful thing. But there are some general guidelines that can be helpful when we are learning how to do this process from the beginning. All right, so we're gonna talk about what panning is, why we use it, and then we're gonna go into a project and actually learn how do we figure out where the tracks are supposed to be placed with panning. So we're gonna to get to all of that. But first, if you don't know what panning is, if you've ever paid close attention to a song, listening to it through headphones or good speakers, you might notice that sometimes it seems like an instrument is coming more from a left speaker or more from a right speaker, or sometimes it feels like it's coming right down the middle, which when you think about it and don't understand the stereo world, that's kind of confusing. How can something come straight down the middle when the speakers are on either side? We'll talk about that too. Um, but panning is actually the practice that we're talking about. It's the practice of moving an audio source from one side or the other or having it right down the middle of the stereo image. And we use panning to create kind of a sense of width and spread. Ever since we started creating and listening to music in stereo instead of mono, we've had the ability to do this and it really helps make the mix feel more realistic because humans actually hear things in stereo. We have two ears and so panning kind of helps things sound a little bit more spread and more realistic. Now I will warn you, we don't want to use panning in order to create clarity in our mix. We want to use it to kind of create space, but we don't want to use it to create clarity necessarily. We want to use EQ and compression for that, and I'll tell you why. The reason is because at some point, your mix is most likely going to end up being heard through a mono system. And if you use a mono system, there is no panning there. So if we, entirely use panning to create the clarity of our mix and then we put it through a mono system our mix loses all that it just falls apart because we didn't create clarity using the right tool so understand the difference of using eq and compression to create clarity in your mix versus using panning panning is a good way to enhance it but that's not how we create the clarity in the first place all right so how does panning actually work like i kind of mentioned before it may seem kind of weird if you don't understand how a stereo system works well panning is created in that stereo system by one speaker producing a signal louder or softer than the other speaker our ears are kind of tuned to think of the thing that's louder is actually coming closer from that. So if we have an instrument that's panned to the right side, that right speaker is actually gonna be reproducing that signal louder than the left one. And our brains interpret that is because it's louder, it's off to that one side more so. So that's kind of how it works. And then if we've got a signal that's right down the middle, both speakers are actually recreating that signal at the same volume. So let's get into how we decide where to put each vocal track. That's really probably why you clicked on this video in the first place. Well, like I mentioned before, there's no concrete rules in this exercise because different panning techniques and arrangements inspire different feelings and styles in music. However, there are some loose guidelines. So first off, let's talk about LCR panning. This stands for left, center, right. And the thought behind this is really important because the tendency when we get into panning is to just you know, we'll set one thing at 100% to the left, then the next thing is 92%, and the next thing is 87% to the left, and, and we start to fill the entire spectrum, and it gets ridiculous, and it also gets ineffective. And the reason is because panning is dependent on that contrast. It's creating contrast between the left, center, and the right. If we fill that entire spectrum, then there's no contrast. We've kind of destroyed the entire point of panning in the first place. So the idea behind LCR panning is that we've got these three categories that we primarily place everything into, and then the spaces between those are left a little bit more empty. This creates the contrast between the left, center, and the right, and that's what creates the helpful 
um, enhancement of panning in a stereo mix. Second of all, we got to be intentional about instrument placement. I like to think of this in terms of um, when we're mixing with volume faders, we kind of have a level that we put things at. So, you know, the vocal often sits on top of the instruments and the drums might sit on in in this volume orientation versus this or you know we kind of order things out in the order that we need to hear them in order to feel like it's balanced panning is really the same thing just on the horizontal spectrum instead of the volume or vertical spectrum we're kind of if we're looking at a stage we're kind of placing the instruments in that stage so that it kind of spreads it out and we get kind of this image of space in that mix so that's we really need to be intentional about where we pan things because we're actually placing instruments in that mix it makes a big difference and then third there's a few tracks that almost always go in the center and this is a good foundational point i'm talking about the kick the snare and the lead vocal and typically the bass guitar sometimes that gets stereo panned in other different kinds of music but most of the time those things go right down the middle reason is because those are your lead rhythm and melody instruments the things that are leading oftentimes go right in the middle everything else kind of supports it from the sides of the stereo spectrum so that's kind of the the kind of main guidelines that we use when we're talking about panning so let's actually now get into a project here and we're going to go through this. You can kind of see, let's see here. You can kind of see here, I've got some drum tracks. I've got guitars, piano, vocals, and we're going to work through these and start to kind of pan them. And I'm going to show you my thought processes when I go through these and separate them. Well, like I said, talking about intentionality with placing instruments, there are some things that we need to know in order to do this well. So first off, let's start with the drums here. Okay, now drums are sort of a little bit of the exception to the LCR panning rule. Drums as an instrument, they're a lead rhythm instrument. So oftentimes they're gonna go more towards the middle. However, because drums are one instrument and a bunch of instruments all in one, there's a little bit of variation to that rule. So in this project, we have overheads here. So these overheads are pan, uh, panned far left and far right. That's kind of a big spread for an instrument that's supposed to be leading in the middle. So a lot of times I kind of bring my overheads in a little bit, give them a little bit of space, and then I kind of fill them out with all of the other individual mics. So kick, snare, top snare bottom those are all going to go in the middle these rack toms um, floor toms and hi-hats are really the ones we're going to kind of spread a little bit so let's just listen to these drums and see kind of okay we want these individual channels to match the overheads and then we want it to kind of feel cohesive we want it to be one instrument leading in the middle but also have enough space to differentiate between all those individual components so let's take a listen here and just kind of start turning some knobs and see what kind of comes out a lot of times with drums i mix it from the perspective of the drummer so if i'm sitting in the drum seat my my rack toms are going to kind of be right out front here and then hi-hat's going to be over on my left and then floor tom's going to be over on my right hand so i'm going to kind of spread those probably like that so let's take a listen here so like i said with these overheads they're spread pretty far so i'm going to reduce this down to maybe around 50 percent or so see what that's like okay so that feels like it's a little bit more in the middle now let's work with some of these toms let's see here where is a good fill Okay, so here how all those toms are right down the middle. They're all like on top of each other. So we can actually spread them apart a little bit. So I'm gonna put this one over to 
the left a little bit, this one over to the right. Actually, no. I'm gonna put this one over to the left. I'm gonna put this one in the center and then this one over to the right. Since there's there's three of them there, the second rack tom would be more in the center, most likely. We'll just sew these and listen to them. Okay, so you heard in that fill, the the tom one was kind of over to the left, then it kind of moves to the center, and then it goes all the way to the right with the floor time. So I kind of like that fill. Let's listen to that with the overheads. Okay, so that sounds pretty good to me there. Then like I said before, with if I was sitting in a drum kit, the hi-hat would be kind of over to the over to the left. Let's see what that's like. There isn't a lot of this because most of that's coming in the overhead mics anyway. So, um, so yeah, that'll be just over to the left side. Okay, so we've got the whole drum kit here. Okay, so that's spread a little bit. You can kind of differentiate between all those drums, but they're not so spread out that they still feel like they're kind of in the middle and leading the charge on that. That's the way I like drums. All right, let's go to guitars next. All right, so guitars, bass guitar goes in the middle. We're gonna mostly be working with these four, five tracks right here. Okay, so I'm noticing here on this project, this one has, 12 string electric, it has acoustic guitar one, mic one, and then acoustic guitar mic one, or acoustic guitar one, mic two. So this is the same instrument, just mic'd with two mics, and then this one is a different instrument, mic'd only with one. So my guess is I'm gonna keep these two together, and then I'm gonna put this one kind of on the opposite side. When we're talking about panning things, we're, we're looking for balance on either side. So if it's not in the middle, we're gonna put it on either the left or the right, but we don't want one side to feel like heavier than the other. We want them to feel pretty balanced. So probably what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna listen to them in a second, but probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pan these over to the left together, and then this one over to the right a little bit and see kind of what that's like. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I did these about 50% left, 50% right. The reason is they need a little bit of spread because they're two guitars that sound very similar. So they need to be spread out. I can put one on the left, one on the right. It'll help balance that out. But then also the guitars in this song are mostly, a, they're a very lead instrument. Um, and so I kind of want to have those more in the middle. So I'm gonna kind of break the LCR rule a little bit here. Um, I'm gonna make them feel like they're kind of in the middle, but they need a little bit of spread, kind of like the drums, because there's multiple pieces that sound very similar in there. <laughs> okay, all right, let's add the 12 string electric here. Okay, I'm gonna change my mind here, because I can do that. All right, I'm gonna put the acoustic guitars, I'm gonna bring them in a little bit, and then I'm gonna put these 12 string electric, and I'm guessing this pedal steel I can put on the right side, so it kind of builds that out a little bit. <laughs> Okay. 
All right, compromise. We're gonna put the 12 string and the pedal steel on hard, hard left, hard right. We're gonna put the acoustic guitars kind of 50% so they can kind of lead still in the middle but be spread apart. I like that better. <laughs> Yeah, that'll work. Okay. All right, let's move on to piano here. Okay, so this piano is a stereo track. But just like the acoustic guitars, this is, it's leading most of this song. So we're gonna kind of leave it more in the middle there to add some organs. Those are kind of backing up the piano there. So I'm actually just gonna leave them this one leave it spread and then this one right down the middle kind of with the piano so those those are fine together all right let's go on to vocals lead vocal for me always goes in the middle background vocal this is like a harmony at track i think so that's gonna kind of go down the middle these two here let's listen to those friends that i have left so they hear me say how I lost my way. How I lost my way. I... Okay, so we got lead vocal here, uh, harmony vocal there. I'm just gonna hard pan these, see what that's like. Friends that I have left, so they hear me say. Yeah, okay, so th these two tracks only have like a couple lines in here, so I'm gonna hard pan them left and right. And that way it'll just kind of add some texture once we get to this last hook part of the song. All right, so that's kind of start to finish there. We've gone through all these instruments. Let's kind of see what this sounds like. We'll pick a big chorus here and see if we need to adjust anything. I don't wanna be a I like where this is at. Um, so the drums sound pretty good here. I did a little bit of adjusting over here um, just to make sure the levels were sitting right, making sure stuff was balanced on either side like we talked about. Um, and then organs, you know, piano kind of help reinforcing that piano right in the middle. So I like where this, this ended up. So that's kind of a basic walkthrough. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Um, if you're in the middle of trying to learn the basics of how to do this, you're trying to figure out, you know, how do I pan? How do I balance levels? There's a guide on my website called the seven step mix. This guide will walk you through the basic steps of every mix and it talks about panning and how it fits into the equation and what the purpose of it is. If you're trying to learn the basics of this, go check that out. It's completely for free to you. You can download it on my website, themixingprocess.com. I think it'll really help you out with that process. If you have any questions about this um, or about any of your other mixing challenges, feel free to leave a comment below or you can actually contact me directly from my website. 
Um, I'd love to have a conversation with you and help you out with anything that you're feeling challenged by. Um, I'd love to have that conversation with you. So um, until I hear from you, go be good at what you do. Thanks for watching. We will see you on the next one.